James Joyce was perhaps one of the most influential modernist writers. His writing has been celebrated by many writers. His short story The Dead is often considered one of the greatest short stories ever written, and his Ulysses is an epitome of experimental writing, after reading which even George Orwell says that it gave him an inferiority complex. Though in 1904 at the age of 22, Joyce left Dublin due to self-imposed exile, his mind and his writing never stepped outside the city of Dublin which became the subject of his first short story collection, The Dubliners. Hello and welcome to this new series of videos in which we will be discussing the struggles of the writers now generally regarded as great. The idea behind the series is to look into the interesting history of some of the most loved literary pieces and to inspire ourselves in this eternal struggle of writing. In 1904, soon-to-be editor of the weekly publication Irish Homestead, George Russell, asked Joyce in a letter to write something simple, ruler, or live-making, and The Sisters was published on the 13th August of the same year. After which, Joyce decided to write a series of epic lecti, which would be called The Dubliners. Soon to more stories, Eveline and After the Race was published in the Irish Homestead. By this time, Joyce had already left Ireland for the continent. Joyce wrote another story titled Christmas Eve in Zurich and sent it to the homestead, but it was refused or rather rejected, which started the story of Joyce's struggle of getting published. During this year, Joyce paused his work on the Dubliners to focus on his novel Stephen Hero, which later became the portrait of the artist as a young man. Only in July 1905, Joyce went back to the Dubliners, and in a quick succession, he wrote seven more stories, which he then sent to the publisher named Grant Richards. And while waiting for Richards' reply, Joyce wrote yet another story, Two Gallants. As soon as Joyce sent Two Gallants, the printer refused to print it, and Richards wrote to Joyce, there are still limitations imposed on the English publisher and demanded alterations in the passages he found objectionable, which included two passages of the story counterparts and a substitution for the word bloody in the story titled Grace. In a reply, Joyce wrote in a rather long letter, I cannot alter what I have written. All these objections arose in my mind when I was writing the book, both as to the themes of the stories and their manner of treatment. Had I listened to them, I would not have written the book. I have come to the conclusion that I cannot write without offending people. He further adds, the printer denounces two gallants and counterparts. A Dubliner would denounce Ivy Day in the committee room. The Irish priest will denounce the sisters. The Irish boarding housekeeper will denounce the boarding house. Joyce made the purpose behind the stories very clear in the latter, but unfortunately, he managed to bring Richard's attention to even further objectionable content which Richards then demanded to change in a subsequent letter. On 23rd June 1906, Joyce finally agreed to delete the word bloody from all the passages except from one passage in the boarding house and to modify counterparts as well. But unfortunately, Richards declined to publish the book altogether on 24th September 1906, saying that the Dubliners is a kind of a book that would not be successful and therefore it might hamper Joyce's future endeavor. For the next three years, Joyce dealt with private affairs and kept sending the Dubliners to different publishers and wrote The Dead, which is now the final story of the collection. Finally, in 1909, during his visit to Dublin, Joyce met with the publisher Mounsell & Company and signed a contract to publish the book. Some two months later, when Joyce visited Dublin again, he met with the objections of George Roberts, who was the managing director of the Mounsell & Company. Robert's objections were in the discussion of Edward VII in the story Ivy Day in the Committee Room. Against his will, Joyce made a few changes, but it brought him no good because George Roberts was still not happy with it. Joyce was not the sort of a man to let things go off easily. He wrote a letter to the then King George V along with the passages of Ivy Day, which Roberts thought to be offensive to Edward VII, and asked the King George whether he found the passages offensive, Joyce did receive a reply, but it was from the king's secretary and not from the king himself. The reply read, It is inconsistent with the rule for his majesty to express his opinion in such cases. 
Negotiations between Joyce and Roberts moved back and forth with the latter demanding more and more changes to be made. Roberts even asked Joyce to remove the actual names of the places in counterparts and four other stories and replace them with fictitious ones. Eventually, the diluted version of the proofs made its way to the printer. But on September 5th, 1912, Roberts decided not to publish the book and called Joyce to take over the proofs for £30. Joyce agreed, but now the printer, John Falconer, announced he would neither turn over the unpatriotic sheets nor take any fee for printing. But fortunately for Joyce, he managed to get the copy by ruse. The following year was difficult for Joyce, but on the 15th December 1913, fate took a little fortunate turn when a letter arrived from American poet Ezra Pound showing his interest in Joyce's writing. Interestingly, Pound, who was then one of the most active literary men, came to know about Joyce from Irish poet Samuel Butler Yeats. And eventually, Joyce's novel, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, was set up to be serialized. This strengthened Joyce's position and on 19 January 1914, Joyce wrote to Grant Richards again for the publication of The Dubliners. Only after 10 days did Richards agree to publish The Dubliners on 29 January. The contract was signed according to which Joyce was not to receive royalties for the first 500 copies. After nine long years of waiting and after sending the manuscripts to 12 different publishers, the Dubliners finally ran to the print of 1250 copy. The book mostly received positive reviews from the critics, but unfortunately for Joyce, only 499 copies were sold, one shot for receiving royalty, even though 120 copies were brought by Joyce himself. In the years to follow, things started taking a little positive turn for Joyce. Yates wrote a letter of recommendation for Joyce and in August 1916, Joyce was granted a hundred pound from the civil list. Thanking Yates, Joyce wrote, I hope that now at last matters may begin to go a little more smoothly for me. For, to tell the truth, it is very tiresome to wait and hope for so many years. Joyce struggled not only for himself but for all the writers and artists who were to come after him. He paved a way for all of us who wanted to experiment with our writing. He taught us not to think conservatively or traditionally but to push our imaginative and linguistic limits to the extremes and by remaining true to our art, produce something so beautiful that even after a century, it amazes the world.